Greetings class and welcome to a, another lecture here for uh, teaching uh, TESOL methods uh, for uh, math, science, and social studies. This particular one will be dealing with science and the materials that I'll be talking about primarily will be coming out of this Kella handbook. Kella is another version of uh, teaching uh, the uh, content to second language learners. Kella stands for Cognitive Academic Language Learning Approach. Um, and today we're going to be looking at the science elements of this. Now, teaching math, as I mentioned before, is probably one of the easier elements to teach because there is limited vocabulary, limited um, uh, grammar uh, structures that need to be taught. Uh, teaching science is, provide, uh, is more difficult. There's more vocabulary. There are more structures that need to be taught. There are tons more in uh, content that needs to be understood so that you can merge the content with the uh, with the language uh, to help your students succeed. So today we're going to be looking at a science curriculum. We'll be looking at some principles and standards, some difficulties that ELLs are going to have, and also we're going to look at ways to improve uh, their language learning uh, within the science uh, domain. And so let's just jump right in here and look at some of the uh, principles and standards. Um, as I mentioned to you before, um, uh, Kala and uh, SIOP and those ideas were not things that actually um, emerged uh, from overseas. There were things that emerged here in the U.S. Kala is more linguistic in nature in that it was looking for more of a systematic approach to teaching uh, outside of the realm of uh, education. Uh, at the same time, it was also trying to bridge um, major elements. For example, we're looking at principles and standards here that developed in the U.S. to try to teach students in more of a systematic approach, teaching them science. And so there were benchmarks for science that were developed in 1993 and then the National Science Education Standards that were developed in uh, 1996. These included not only the uh, how of teaching uh, science, but the what of teaching science. So students were not only learning about uh, what procedures they needed to study and understand, but they also were studying how to use those procedures in order to teach science. I'm sorry, in order to learn science. So uh, those same types of standards are now should be included within uh, a color approach or a content-based uh, learning approach to uh, teaching language. Um, some of the uh, areas that students need to study, well, actually, there are, are a number of them, and that means that you as a teacher need to know what those areas are. They include things like the physical sciences, uh, earth science, space science, life science, and so you as a, an ESL teacher uh, need, to ha need to have uh, access and understand and have uh, control over those areas of study. At the same time, you should learn as a, as a T-cell teacher, uh, as an ESL teacher, scientific inquiry. How do we go about the processes? What processes do our students need to learn if they're going to be doing some type of scientific inquiry? And how to include that scientific inquiry into the ELL classroom? Uh, now, typically, when students, native speakers, are learning uh, sciences, it's done in sort of a spiral type of uh, curriculum where the items are covered uh, over and over again but in greater depth and greater complexity throughout the years. So the curriculum is typically that way and it's going to focus on not only the science but also the inquiry. Now at the same time as students uh, when they're in the younger levels they have a broader um, uh, approach, they have a broader uh, what's the word I want to say? They, they receive a broader spectrum of education in the sciences. When they get to higher levels, uh, generally they start having classes that are focused into one of the areas, like it's only life science, or it's only um, astronomy, or it's only physics, or it's only chemistry. And so again, you as a teacher need to understand what those areas are, understand the vocabulary and the procedures that are involved uh, in, those, in those types of experiments and studies rather interesting, I do think. Uh, it is still content-based. Um, look at that, there's a typo. Science, like any field of study, is dependent on language and understanding and development. And we said the same thing for math, and there are language difficulties. These include vocabulary and syntax. These include academic language skills. 
Uh, this area, more than any other, I believe, has difficulties with academic language skills, primarily because of the need to do research, the need to work in groups, the need to ask questions and make predictions uh, and write up conclusions. Um, so this is probably, in this area, there is more academic uh, interaction. There's also, of course, the need for uh, discourse competency, how to work within groups, and then, of course, the conceptual understanding. There's a lot of content here. There's a lot of ideas and, and uh, uh, information that students need to understand and grapple with uh, so they can succeed in these classes. Uh, but we still have the language core. And you know, to be honest, most of these ideas that we're looking at here, the language that they're going to be, uh, or the areas they're going to be grappling with, most of them are going to be the same regardless of what the field is. Okay, the difference is going to be what kind of vocabulary, what kind of syntax, uh, what kind of content, but this still the general categories aren't going to change very much. Uh, in the science in the classroom, um, y again, you as a teacher, you have to know the content. That's, that's one. Then you're going to have to understand what your students are going to need in order to understand that content. And these are the six areas here that I've tried to list. Um, and summarized out of the textbook. One is that they're going to have to be able to do listening. You're going to have to understand explanations. They're going to have to understand a demonstration. If a teacher does a demonstration in a class, they're going to have to be able to understand what that scientific demonstration is. They're going to be given directions on how to do some type of experiment, and they're going to need to understand that. They're going to have to listen for specific information as they're, as they're writing down or as they're hearing something, right? They're going to have to work with a partner, which means they need to do discourse, and you can model that type of discourse as we go along. <coughs> Excuse me. I have reading types of skills. They're going to have specialized vocabulary. They're going to have to learn how to read graphs, scientific graphs and charts, right? They're going to, have, again, have to follow information. You remember seventh grade, I think it is, when, when uh, a lot of kids learn um, about um, anatomy of animals, and they have to cut open a, uh, you know, I don't know what, a frog or uh, some, some type of animal, right? They're going to have to know what all those are. They have to know the directions. So, again, they're going to have to... Uh, follow those directions. In speaking, they're going to have to answer questions. They're going to have to ask questions. They're going to have to discuss. They're going to have to explain. They're, they may have to do a demonstration, and they're definitely going to have to work with partners. So there's a lot of activity going on there that you, as a second language teacher, can focus on when you're dealing with science. And that means, again, that you're going to have to know what these students are learning. You're going to have to know what they need. Okay. In other words, you're going to have to do some uh, linguistic analysis to find out where they're weak and then you're gonna have to find out what they need to, to get to be up to date with their students and you have to bridge all this stuff together and that's what Kella is trying to do uh, okay here uh, with regard to writing they're gonna have to write answers to questions so they're gonna have to take notes if they're listening to a lecture or listening to a video or something they're gonna have to describe phenomena they're going to have to describe a research they're doing or an observation, and they're going to have to do it in proper format. Um, as I no typically tell uh, college writers, I typically tell them to avoid using the passive. However, in the field of science, very often the passive is used. There it is. And so your students are going to have to learn what those types of things are. They're also going to have to learn to summarize. They've done a research, they've done uh, the information, they've described everything, and then they're going to have to learn how to summarize that. Well, that's another element they're going to need. There's going to be grammar specific to science, as I just mentioned, the things like uh, the passive. And there is a ton of vocabulary that these students are going to need to learn. There's a lot of information here, as opposed to what we just looked at before in mathematics, that the, your students are going to have to grapple with. Um, Obviously, you're not hitting all of this at once, and so as if you enter a school and you're going to be teaching TESOL in a public school where your students are going to be dealing with science, you uh, should find out what those areas are so that you can gradually work on these skills uh, throughout the semester or throughout the quarter so that they can be ready uh, to handle all that information. Uh, the Kala instructional sequence, again, according uh, to the uh, Kala uh, approach here, uh, the first step that you're going to need is preparation. You're going to be teachers are going to be preparing students. They're going to be doing some pre-learning and some prior knowledge. Again, you as a teacher need to find out what your students know. You're going to try to help get them ready for the actual lesson. Pre-reading activities, uh, pre-learning activities to introduce them to concepts, introduce them to vocabulary. 
uh, find out what they already know. So you might have some uh, questionnaires or queries beforehand, again, to help you prepare your students. And then you're going to be presenting information. You as a teacher may need to model how how uh, procedures work, model uh, the scientific method, model how you can analyze and keep the, the you know the researcher as far away from the the test as possible, for example. But you're going to model, you're going to demonstrate, and after you model and demonstrate whatever research that you're going to be giving these students, then you let them practice, and they can practice with the model. They're going to try to do this, and you of course. Are, are you know, you're standing alongside, you're giving that support as necessary so that they can learn how to do that model. When they're finished with the practice, you let them evaluate. How well did they do? Of course, you're going to evaluate, but you're also going to let them evaluate so that they can do some metacognitive, metalinguistic type of analysis to see how well they did. After they've gone through this entire process, you then move on to expansion, where you basically give them another project to do and you step back. Okay. You give less support and let them struggle and try to work at making um, a, a, um, a research, uh, doing a scientific activity by themselves. This is the sequence that you normally do in color, and to be honest, it's the same type of sequence that you would do with most anyone who you are introducing new information to. And so it's a very nice uh, setup here, and I would just have you uh, try to remember and memorize these. Prepare, present, practice, self-evaluate, and then expansion. Again, that's right out of their textbook. It's right out of their handbook. Um, and that's the color instructional sequence. In addition to uh, preparing them, in addition to knowing the information, as I said before, and knowing what they need, you as a teacher want to try to include uh, learning strategies. And there are a number of learning strategies that are here. Uh, and we've looked at some of these before. Um, we looked at some of the metacognitive strategies. And these are um, other strategies that are connected to part of the scientific process that your students may be going through. So for example, they're going to identify a scientific problem or an issue that they're going to research. And then what are the learning skills that they may be interested in? They're going to be using background information, for example, or they're going to be making predictions based on the information that they have, right? You're going to try to plan and organize. These are some, these are some learning skills, right? Collecting and recording evidence. And what type of learning skills do they need uh, for this? Uh, and they are, they are, here they are listed there, formulating an, uh, an explanation from your evidence. So after they run their test and they collect this information, now they've got to try to figure out how, what does all of this mean. This may mean cooperating with other, other students. It may mean trying to find the patterns involved because they're analyzing the data here at this point. And they may need to clarify or they may need to sequence things. Again, these are all things that you can practice um, with your students during some type of modeling. They may have to look for, do some type of selective attention, uh, which they would do in language study, but here they're also doing it in science study as they're trying to find a pattern, right? Uh, the next step is collecting, I'm sorry, the next step is connecting explanation uh, to knowledge. So they may have some idea that they have, okay, maybe this is what the solution is. These are what these numbers mean. And then they have to go and look up the research information to find out if it's verifiable, right? So they need to go get, uh, have access to information. They may need to use images. They may need to make inferences based on the data that they've received. And uh, finally, they're going to be sharing their findings. And this is your standard research uh, protocol here. At the end of all of your research and your analysis and your summation is that you share your findings. And this may mean, again, that you need to plan and organize how you share those findings. It may mean that you need to cooperate. Obviously, you're going to be evaluating uh, at this point and at the previous level as well. You're going to be evaluating how well uh, you've organized your stuff so that you can share it. You're going to be doing some self-talk because you're probably going to be presenting this either orally or in written format. So you're going to be doing some self-analysis as we go. And these are some strategies for scientific study. Um, I believe if you look at all these strategies and you look back at your textbook, you're noticing that many of these learning strategies are, are the same in math and they're going to be the same in social studies. But the order that they're being used or the procedures that they're being used, this information over here is not necessarily the same as it is in mathematics because this is more of a scientific procedures. So uh, this side over here is going to be a little different than the stuff that's right above me here. Um, the, 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 uh, 
the lesson, I'm sorry, the learning strategies are not going to change very much, but the pr procedures in which they're done are going to change. Uh, so if you look back over this again and you see that we've got principles and standards that have developed because um, the public school system included them, and you see that there are language difficulties, again, it's similar to uh, mathematics and it's going to be similar to other areas as far as the categories. They're still going to have problems in vocabulary or syntax or um, uh, uh, CALP, Cal Cognitive Academic Language uh, uh, um, Proficiency, um, but the specifics for them are going to be different based on, on the science uh, terminology, based on the science uh, uh, grammatical, often you frequently use grammatical structures, and based on the content that you as a teacher need to know. So I hope all of this was uh, understandable to you. We're going to talk a little bit more about other issues related to uh, teaching science to second language learners in one more segment. And that's going to include uh, more scientific issues and how you as a teacher can be introducing those issues to your students. If you, to do, if you do have any questions, please give me uh, an email or get on Skype and I'll be glad to help you. Have a nice day now. Bye-bye.